Hey guys, uh, good afternoon. Uh, yet another uh, episode with Unite. Uh, as all of you know that Unite is in collaboration with Bits Pilani, Government of Telangana and Work TV. And today we have a special friend, uh, guest, uh, Manan Sharma. He is the country head uh, HR. Uh, he is leading the departments of HR and admin for uh, Blaze. And uh, yeah, he's got uh, a lot of experience, almost 15 plus years of experience in HR. And he's worked with a lot of industries like tech, financial institutions, uh, ITES and e-commerce space. And uh, right now, uh, the company where he is leading uh, the HR unit uh, is world's leading startup in AI semiconductors at space. So he has got a lot of experience with respect to HR management, uh, psychology of you know what an entrepreneur should be, what an employee should be, what is the orientation of an employee when he is working for a startup. Uh, he is also into life coaching and uh, he is uh, into development and uh, he knows uh, what what is the right pay you can you know pay for the role which uh, this individual will uh, you know work for the startup and a lot of financial or you know HR analytics and a uh, lot of experience so we thought uh, he is the right person who can discuss the importance of knowing uh, you know yourself uh, this applies to the entrepreneur or the founder of the company this also applies for uh, every individual that uh, you know joins and works for the startup so you know thanks a lot uh, manan for joining in and uh, it's an honor having you here so maybe you can share your journey how you started uh, with, with your journey and you know why hr or human resources are very critical for the startups so that the startup is successful what is the attitude they need to have? Uh, what what is the mindset they need to have? So yeah, I, I think only the HR leader can you know distinguish this uh, or you know represent this correctly and you know showcase this. So thanks a lot, Prashant, also for joining in from Bits Pilani. So he is in the extreme right. And uh, so over to you, uh, Madam. Thanks for having me, Ravi. Uh, an honor to be invited uh, to such a forum. Uh, you guys have been doing a great job. I get to hear about it regularly from Japan. And uh, I can't thank you enough for having me here. Uh, my own journey, I started off as a techie. Uh, I was maybe at the 60th or 50th percentile of my class in a uh, tier two, tier three government college uh, in Uttar Pradesh. And it was just a matter of time before I realized that you need to play to your strengths. My strengths started during the second half of my engineering, wherein project work, teamwork, all these things were getting into go. That's when my grade point started shooting up all the way to a 9.06 in my final semester. Uh, that was an indication, sign from the stars that Maran, maybe you need to get to a domain that is more closely aligned with your strengths. And that's how the journey started. Um, did my MBA from Great Lakes Institute of Management, Chennai. It was a one-year program. Majored in human resources, minored in marketing. It was with Genpact. Genpact, uh, as you know, and we, common, uh, we share a common aspect there. Uh, they are a number driven organization. You can't be mushy mushy about HR there. HR better know how the attrition metrics are calculated, how analyzation works, how shift utilization works, what is the revenue impact of all these things. So the grounding was fairly thorough uh, in that respect. And then I followed up that stint with companies like Amazon and Media Graphics in the tech space. Uh, um, and since the last five years, I've been working as in the startup domain. I've worked with a couple of startups. Um, at one point, I was a group HR for a uh, group of four companies. Um, and then I, the, the entrepreneurial bug bit me. Uh, till November 2019, I was working as an independent HR consultant. Um, that's how I got to know Prashant, by the way. And the uh, journey was really interesting. Uh, I picked up my fellowship during that time. Fellowship in Strategic Human Resource Management from World HR Board and uh, has been a great journey so far. Now, one of the things that I realized during this journey was that uh, entrepreneurs to understand the business idea, the business model, see the five years, seven year uh, forecasting, uh, cash flow statements, and all that stuff. They were not investing that much time into, into understanding the people who were bringing the ideas to them. And you speak to entrepreneurs who have had failed journeys. Well, it's harsh to call it failure, but uh, not just so smooth learning journeys. Uh, and they'll they'll all tell you one thing: the idea was great. The ideas, 
idea was well ahead of your time uh, of their, their time uh, but the people who executed the idea were not that great and then i asked the question who hired those people and they're like yeah we got a bit hands off after hiring the initial few four or five people and then that's when the entire thing got diluted i think that is to the topic today by the way uh, the journey towards realizing your own self before you start off this uh, daunting journey of uh, of being an entrepreneur so i think that's what that's what it is about really uh, i wanted to get this message across and thanks for providing me this platform uh, it's not just the idea that is worth investing you also need to judge the people who are bringing the idea to you so man what what will go wrong you know what are the problems uh, of not knowing themselves and you know beginning this uh, entrepreneur or you know beginning a startup journey and right. do you feel that you know it is okay for them to learn through the journey make mistakes and learn it or you know there, there is a set of mindset they need to have i think first you need to okay let's take the swimming pool example okay uh, i've taken my son to the swimming classes last summer and I, i realized when i when i looked at the entire space by the way it is loud if you have been there most of the street, most of the kids are screaming out loud for their lives uh, because they don't know how to swim and their coaches are about to throw them into the deep end of the pool uh, and that's when the realization hit that it's 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 basically about you your journey and the way you you look at that journey and the various obstacles that come your way are going to be judged by you through your own lens what is your lens are you the kind of guy who learns swimming only when they are thrown into water or are you the person who would like to practice the strokes at the shorter end of the pool shallower end of the pool and then gradually go into the deeper end what are you as a person what is your learning style uh, the, the concept of learning style is is fairly uh, uh, psychometric if i were to call it and, and those who are not aware of psychometrics they call it psychobabble also uh respectfully mm. so uh it's important for you to understand what kind of person you are would you like to adopt a theoretical approach understand the market variables first study those at depth or would you rather be spontaneous and being spontaneous comes with its own risks being not so spontaneous and planned analysis by paralysis by analysis kind of a situation can also arise but it's very important for you to know suppose you are a guy who wants to be on the shallow side of the pool till they become confident and your investor is on the deep side and your investor wants you to throw, to 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 tread the water on the deeper side of the pool there are going to be some fights okay so um, that's where i feel it is it is very very important for you to start understanding yourself before you start off on this journey because this journey is anything but a straight drive okay it's 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 If there is off roading there is underwater there is you're jumping you're catapulting uh, all those kind of vagaries are there uh, but how well are you prepared from your mental framework and uh, that actually is what gets a bulb light bulb created a 999 failures before that one thing one idea clicks but are you able to endure those 999 ideas what happens when the first 20 ideas fail or 50 ideas fail what is your threshold uh so there are all these concepts which have so far been relegated to the realm of the psychoanalysts and the psychologists and the brain shrinks okay that is that has been the package that has been ready to stay away from the ideas listen that's that's all theory uh, it doesn't become too practical uh and my job has been to ensure that both the founders and the investors understand this aspect of the journey very intimately so uh that's what it is about really Uh, knowing yourself defines your journey to a large extent you should know what kind of glasses you are wearing otherwise you will not know whether the grass is green or brown true yeah prashant a uh, question from you 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 will have to unmute yourself uh, i'm yeah. audible yes yeah, yeah. so maran uh, uh, very good point raised is the psychometric analysis and all and uh, i do believe that uh, the startup ecosystem has been evolving a lot and a uh, lot of techies and startups have been concentrating more on the technology side so there is one pillar in our organization which is hrm uh, which is a important pillar yeah. generally generally startups tends to neglect that right. 
somehow they are not able to manage it. So what are your advices to the startup in such scenario? Yeah. See, I don't hold the startups responsible for not having HR initially in the as a part of their journey. Okay? I don't hold them responsible for it. Uh, arguably, you can say that they are not thinking through. Uh, they are not thinking long term enough. But if your if your cash reserves, if your if, if your cash flow is limited, you have to be mindful of every resource that you bring on board. And that's where I think HR has done a not so great job of proving its worth at the table. And because that worth has not been proven so far, all the businesses say that yeah, 99% of the people are ramping up their HR operations only once they have, once they are bootstrapped, or once they have started getting revenues or uh, uh, funding. And let's it's a luxury. Let's let's delay our pleasure a bit. Uh, uh, let's acquire that luxury when we when we have the funds to do it. But that does not answer your question. The question is: Is the HR capability needed early in the HR, in the startup journey? And the answer that to that is the earlier you have it, the better it is. Zappos is a big company. I, I'm sure most of the audiences would know. Uh, Zappos was a company. It's a it was a foot uh, footwear e retailer uh, acquired by Amazon at a at a healthy valuation. Uh, even today, Amazon does not have much to say in their board decisions. By the way, and we are talking about a, we are talking about a behemoth like Amazon being kept at day day by a company that has been acquired by Amazon saying that, listen, our executive decisions are going to be ours alone. And the founder of Zappos was asked, if you were to restart, what would you do differently? His answer was, I would have an HR function earlier. So the people who understand this value and the people who have seen this value, I'm sure G folks would relate to it very clearly. The HR function is not a, it's not a sacrificial function there. G has a very active HR function. And a G leader is never likely uh, to tell you that, yeah, let's not take HR on board with this decision. They are going to prefer having HR on board with their decisions because they value the HR function. And that value has been created by the HR function. So I would say all startups need to take a good long term view. And they don't, if they are not able to hire an HR person, at least hire an HR brain. So it could be a marketing person, it could be a product development person, it could be a finance person. But they need to have the HR thinking cap on. And remember, HR's job is a very, it's like walking on a sword, okay? A uh, long time back in Indian uh, courts of kings, there used to be a joker. What was the function of that joker? It was not for everyone to laugh at that joker and have a good time. The joker, if he or she played her role or his role clearly, they were entrusted with the task of bringing forth the unsavory aspects of ruling of the ruling person in a in a packaged manner, so that they, the king does not get offended and does not say off with his head. Uh, uh, at the same time, they are able to bring some value change. So, the one of the key roles of human resource functions is change advocacy, employee advocacy. How do you do that? You can't do that by burning your bridges with your founders. You need to do that by actually being a partner in that decision making. And that's where I think the startups miss out. Mentors also have been brought up in a scenario where an HR was always a relegated function. And that's why they say, yeah, HR you can get later on. Don't worry too much about it. Kind of a thing. Uh, it's important to get a mentor who is able to tell you that, listen, you need to get your HR strategy in place, people strategy in place, even before you grow big. So that's my answer to you, Prashant. I think. Uh, HR is not that costly. Not having HR can be really costly at times. Yes. And we need to balance that equation out. Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, it's like it's uh, wonderful. I also got something in me and I should tell my startups also on this points. Uh, so now I'll, I'll, I just want your views on some of the technologies intervention which uh, this HR system is having and this HR uh, uh, startups which are coming into place uh, with uh, so, so much of technology and artificial intelligence. Skill uh, development is one sector which has been talked about. So what are your views on such kind of startups and uh, how this industry has been growing and what's your take on the whole scenario developing? The industry has been growing crazily. Okay, the human resource management systems based on the cloud offer efficiencies and cost advantages that none of the legacy systems of the big five or big six IT players of the world can provide. 
Okay, there is no doubt about it. In fact, I did a math some time back. I was drawing up a proposal for one of my consulting clients, and amazing to note, uh, one people management solution, human resource management solution, the entire suite as they call it, from one of the big players, costed ten times of the annual cost of a cloud-based software. Now there are some redundancies and there are some challenges that are. I'm not saying that the cloud way is the only way to go. I think I'll, I'll address this question at a minute level first. The problem is, not all startups have those funds to be able to say even if they grow to 50 or 60 or 100 people, they don't have the start, the funds to be able to buy into these big suites, okay, of human resource softwares. If they get into the sh the, sh the shorter or the, or the buffet offerings, okay, as I call them. Uh, the problem happens that these are not customizable because the IT and software infrastructure that has been utilized to give these solutions is common. In fact, companies like to keep it common because that's how they bring and drive efficiencies. The question here is, what is the quality of the solutions that you are getting in the market today? Okay. Last I checked in 2018, there was three, there were 300 companies working in this space. Okay, uh, and I'm pretty sure year on year growth would be more upwards of 80% in this domain, right? So you have a, a huge choice and a very confusing landscape to pick these solutions from. The problem is, and how you will see it implemented in most of the startups is very rarely are they able to find a single product that addresses their needs from application tracking to career progression or human resource analytics, okay? There are these bits and pieces softwares that are coming up saying that this is our core competencies, this is our set, this is what sets us apart from our competitors. But what happens is they are propping their core competency up so much that the functionality of the other layers is getting compromised. Now, what that leads to is you buy it into a brand X, six months down the line, you see, yeah, this is not working out. Okay, let's let's keep brand X here. Let's put three parts of our learning management system, performance management, attendance management system with this part, let's outsource and let's acquire another package. And then the whole I mean, party starts. Okay, You have to take care of legacy issues. You have to take care of inter-platform inter communication issues. You have to take, take care of data migration. You are worried about the security, whether the cloud is safe or not, AWS communicating with Azure. There are 100 different questions that come up. So my tip to all these startups is, Core competencies are okay, okay, but make sure that you don't spoil the dish just because you want to add salt, sugar, carrot for that matter, uh, uh, thereby at the cost of the other functionalities. An HR person will jump onto your solution the moment you tell them that, listen, we understand your problem. It starts from here, engaging with the people, having a social media presence, acquiring the right talent from that, engaging that talent, hand-holding them once they are inside, making sure that all the systems of your performance management, attendance management, learning management, all those systems seamlessly com combine, and even the exits are taken care of from here. That's what the HR ecosystem is looking for, and it's very hard to get. I've been working on this directly in a hands-on manner for the last five years. Every software that I have ultimately decided to go with, I had to get a complementary software somewhere from out there so that the strengths and weaknesses could be matched. Okay, so, so yeah, so thank you so much again. Uh, so one more question is uh, blockchain has been talked about a lot these days and uh, I, I see a lot of uh, queries uh, for my incubator wherein people come and talk about this blockchain uh, being a useful tool for uh, talent acquisition and moreover the intervention can be into uh, knowing uh, uh, if any frauds or something can be intervened into. So uh, if you have some experience in this sector, uh, you can tell the users and the, how do you see this sector growing in blockchain area, HRM and blockchain. I think the biggest application of blockchain and human resource systems is going to be on background verification fronts. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, that is where most of the problems arise. That is where most of the budget allocations go awry. That's where you always struggle to find out whether a company is good enough. Either they are going to be international names who are going to charge you a bomb for every validation or every background verification that they do, or they are going to be small, small time players looking for their first big client. Okay, so things from an, think from an HR standpoint, think from an HR manager standpoint who has to bring this solution into the company, uh, they are lost. Right? So I think 
a good way and i think companies are going that way by the way you look at the big five it consulting firms they have started experimenting on business cases inside their verticals and they have created their own solutions which now they are finding it so important and so impressive that they have started bringing those into their solution space also they are talking about these solutions on the blockchain technology by the way uh, and they are they are going to their clients and saying that this is what worked out for us we are sure it, we can make it work out for you also and thereby it is becoming a great offering uh, and this is where the challenge for the smaller company uh, companies in this domain comes they will never have those means unless until they are by, they are backed by the big daddies or big mamas of this domain they will never have those resources or the data sets to make their algorithms learn till that happens i am sure i am pretty sure that the bigger players have an advantage over the entry uh, level companies in the blockchain department over to, to you ravi uh, yeah question so manan uh, what percentage of entrepreneurs success contributes or attributes to the uh, psychological factors uh, the person has let's talk about that it's a very interesting question that you bring to the table so let's let's i'll, I'll uh, humor me for the next two or three minutes i'm going to ask you some questions and it's okay if you don't know the answer it's fine you are just building my case yeah, sure. uh, uh, just just bear with me uh, have you heard about draper uh, tim draper no There's a there's a venture capital firm called the Draper Fisher Jurgensen, uh, net worth of around USD one billion. Okay, this is an individual that we are talking about. No issues. Let's move on. Uh, Betsy DeVos. No. She is the ex education secretary of the government of US. Okay, and she is known to make million dollar, hundred million dollar decisions like this in terms of investment. Uh, Cox family. Mm, no, I, I know. I heard about Thomas Cook, but yeah, not, not Cox. Yeah, the Cox family is worth around 20 billion US dollars as of the latest valuation that has been done for them. Uh, I'll tell you why I'm telling these names, uh, asking these names. Uh, Carlos Slim. Mm -hmm. No, so he's I, a Mexican guy, and uh, he's a he's a business tycoon. Uh, it would be of interest to you for for you to know that between 2010 and 2013. he was named consistently the richest person in the world okay uh this one you should know uh the walton family uh -huh. yeah walmart yes right uh i don't have to talk much about them uh, you know how big their scale is scale of operations is by the way they are very interesting venture capitalists also uh angel investors also this last one i definitely know you know him both prashant and ravi uh rupert murdock hmm yeah the media tycoon yes i think there was a james bond movie also that got launched uh, some time back piers brosnan was there uh, and it had a theme what a global media tycoon can do uh, to the world the common thing between all these names that i have taken are these are illustrious names they have created great names for themselves in the careers that they chose they have impressive networks these networks have invariably been built by investing in ideas okay the fifth thing which is common between all of them is that they were duped by the same lady okay they were taken for a giant massive uh, embarrassing ride by a lady called elizabeth holmes she was the founder of a company called theranos right and theranos promised that in the small form factor of maybe a printer okay with just three drops of your blood you put it in a petri dish you put it inside that box and within a couple of hours you will get a result of 300 tests and medical conditions like this okay elizabeth holmes also was by the way a dropout from one of the premier colleges in the us okay she dropped out because her ideas found success right her valuation the valuation of theranos was us dollar 9 billion at some point what is the valuation today of theranos it's zero where is elizabeth holmes she is trying to find funds funding partners to help her fight her fight her legal battle in the us now the question that it begs you is how could one 20 something lady and a fresh college dropout not a not a not a graduate okay a dropout take such illustrious brains for a ride turns out she was excellent at creating perceptions 
look up Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos on the internet. You will find her dressed up mostly like Steve Jobs. Her eye contact at all times, even if she was talking to a camera, was unflinching. She never used to blink an eye. And the most interesting factor was her voice. That voice was mature beyond her years. It was a bass, high bass voice. And what was she trying to do? She had been exploiting three very crucial psychological aspects of human mind. First impressions, correlation, okay? And that at some level, all of us in our psychologies trust high bass voices more than high pitched voices. True. And she took everyone for a ride. What a ride it was. Okay. Now the question that I'm asking here is, most of the investors will fall through this trap one time or the other. Okay. Most of the investors who have had a rough time with any idea that they invested in would not be so frustrated about the idea itself. It would be, as I touched upon earlier, it would be the execution of the idea. And the execution of the idea is the brain plan of the founder, mostly. So how do you assess that? And that's why I say, both for founders and for investors, this is a stream of science that has been undervaluated. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth Holmes was a compulsive liar. She was she lied with so much conviction that she, she almost believed her own agenda. It was hard for her to distinguish between what was she saying which was wrong and what was she saying that actually was a fact. That line got blurred. And because that line got blurred in her mind, she spoke with absolute conviction. Confidence is very it is it is it is like dope. Okay. It, it, it can actually make you get into a stupor. And that's what happened with all these brilliant minds. If it can happen with them, I will leave that question there. Okay. Uh, that's for the investors to ponder over. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that there is a way to find this out. Okay. There are tests, okay, there are assessments, there are questions that can be depended upon people like Carl Jung, people like uh, Sigmund Freud, okay, have been working on these ideas, developing questionnaires over a period of decades. The sample size itself is humongous. It runs in multiple millions of samples tested across the world. What, what is the reason why we fail to tap onto this information? There are two reasons for it. One, in India at least, we want to go with the herd. Okay. Uh, the price for innovation is too high. Okay. The cost for innovation is too high. The, 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 the uh, social stigma for failed innovation is very high. Right? Uh, and the other problem is that there is a lack of general awareness about these aspects. So that's what my offering is. That's what I bring to the table. That's what I'm trying through this media. That's what I'm trying to that's the awareness I'm trying to create here, Ravi. Uh, that you need not just depend on your brain. I mean, even companies like Google, they don't depend on a single person's brain to make a decision. If they have the concept of wisdom of crowds, right? If companies are moving forward that far, why are the investors lying around thinking that their brain is what is going to hold them in the right place? There is research, there's enough amount of evidence-based uh, research that is there in the market that is just waiting to be exploited by someone who knows business. Okay. The other problem is psychologists don't always understand business. Psychometrists don't always understand business. And that's why these two sides of the river are never meeting. True. Right? You need to go bonkers to be able to visit a psychoanalyst or a psychotherapist. Right? You need to be a businessman to understand this side of the story. And there are very few people who will be able to make these two ends meet. And that's where I think the real fertile Round will be ready. So that's what, and, and thanks for giving me this forum. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's what my reason the idea is. Ravi. So uh, Manan, where, where do we get uh, these tests done? Is there a platform? Is there a website? How much does it cost? And are, are these, uh, you know, really accurate? Yeah, good question. Um, none of the tests is accurate on its own. Okay, that's why. Uh, so 
let me give you an example I'll, i'll quickly shift away from that question and then come back to that question tuberculosis for the largest point of time the only way to diagnose tuberculosis was to rule out all the other diseases right now things have moved forward okay uh, we are trying to see that a pattern emerges when we look at various tests and there is there is there has to be a single person or a single brain or a single cpu that processes all these variable inputs brings it together to paint a portrait right so it's like it's like you creating a picture out of multiple data points when you create a picture out of your own brain about a person about a business idea it's only your brain that you're thinking about it's only your brain that is doing the solution think of these battery of tests as things that cover between the three or four tests they cover the entire psychometric profile of a of a person so they don't they are not accurate just on their own there are patterns that start emerging when you look at three four five such tests put together okay and then there are various depths to which you can go with these tests uh let me give an example indian army uses the thematic a perception test as a part of the service selection board right uh, uh engineers aspirants who want to get into the army have classes online classes to uh get trained on how to respond to these kind of tests the thematic a perception test or the ink plot or the raw shack test okay there are multiple such tests which are out there which are very tough to beat okay uh, uh you can memorize questions 60 70 100 150 questions you can memorize okay but when it gets into the abstract space there's no place to hide okay your innermost thoughts come out and as someone who has been administering these tests in and out i know that you can't be there is not there is no guard there is no firewall that will stop you from bringing out your true self when you take these tests now here is the here is the inherent problem also so there is a solution space uh, ravi which is very light almost uh, a pop culturist okay uh, the mbti the mayer brick type indicator personality types uh, the risk the, the disc uh, assessments all those assessments are there and it's like the, the pop fiction right and then you want to get into more meaningful areas wherein you get the insight of that person uh that is the deeper end of the pool right so there are all these this entire spectrum of solutions is possible the first the shallow part is mostly automated you will find multiple sites on 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 uh, the internet to get these tests done but again remember no site out there without asking you to shell out a bomb like a corporate Okay, is going to give you a unified solution. They are not going to cross interpret the various results that you get from the multiple tests, and they are not going to amal- amalgamate that into a single solution and give it to you. That again is no good. If you are investing, if you are, if you are, can you put your money on that report? No, no. not on that isolated report. You need someone to bring all those ideas together, put it in the context of a business in a startup mode, the hustle of a st- startup mode. and then the dish becomes savory okay and then there is the other end of the spectrum goes deep wherein the investor or the or the or the founder just might freak out develop cold feet at the right moment at, at the last moment saying i don't know what all they are going to find out about me hmm right and that's where the credibility of the person administering the test is also very important their capability to be able to differentiate personal from what is the business related stuff is very important okay so that's that's what the solution space is you asked a question on pricing uh, uh you have the international established organizations who are going to charge you 15 to 20000 rupees for a single test okay you have the practitioners and that is also an ecosystem which is thriving these days uh, uh if you are able to validate their background okay uh, you will be able to even find uh, practitioners who will be able to run a battery of such tests and give you a profile snapshot so the costing can go up anywhere from that simple amount uh to the higher lakhs per administration and there are all, always these smaller solutions that you can get into based on your personal credibility based on their exposure you can work with them and you can try and understand you don't need pure psychologists or psychometrists you need a mix of psychometrists and business uh savvy people to be able to pull that information out for you 
Uh, so yeah, there are light modules uh, that are that get administered for the fraction of a price that these the millennials, as I call them, uh, that it's it's a funny thing, uh, Ravi. I this is something that I observed. You tell a millennial that uh, uh, listen, here is a test or a battery of tests. You give two hours to this test, you will be able to find out which career path that might be worth it. And they'll be like, yeah, how much is it going to cost? And you're going to tell them our amount, and they say, nah, this is this is too much. Yeah, I'll do it later. And the next thing you know is they have bought a mobile phone, uh, <laughs> which is which is maybe twice that amount. So <laughs> that's a part that I'm still trying to figure out, uh, even as a as a as a person who wants to build an idea. Uh, I think that's been a tough piece to crack. I think they feel that everything is there on the internet to, for them to find out, but even the results that you get on the internet need to be interpreted in a certain manner. So yeah, from a very affordable and very easy to deploy package to a complex package, there is this entire spectrum that can be deployed and the rates vary based on who you are going to. So this this might be also a good tool for uh, the incubators because they're the ones who are like incubating the startups and also for the investors, uh, the VCs, because they, they're at higher risk, you know, they, though this person might not be very keen in getting his own tests done because but for the venture capitalists, you know, they definitely don't want to get duped like the, uh, you know, the examples. Absolutely. So for but them, I think the, this okay, is a good tool. It's a good point that you bring in, Ravi. Uh, uh, let me talk about my experience with one of the top incubators in this region. Okay. I spoke to them about this idea and their response was, listen, this is like brilliant. I and mean, we haven't even thought about these lines on these lines can be very valuable. And the next thing was, uh, uh, they talked about the pricing and they were like, yeah, this is, maybe this is not the right time. Maybe we should interact later. But the problem was, uh, I mean, it's price is a personal choice. Okay. It's, it's something that uh, uh, is truly dependent. I can't see, I can't go into their pockets and see how much money do they have. It, it won't be fair. But one thing maybe the investors that need to think about is penny wise pound foolish. Hmm. Uh, the right amount of investment in this area is going to ease your life in in brilliant manners. So I'll give you a tangible example there, Ravi. Uh, there's the concept of career anchors. Okay, It has been researched for quite some time in the human resource domain. And you, you have your human resource background. Uh, G was one of the companies that used to work around it a lot. Uh, the career anchors th philosophy says that you in your professional life will be driven by one of nine variables or a combination of these nine variables. Right. One of those variables is power. Another is social status. Another is financial independence or financial security. Now, what if you put in a founder and an investor who are high on power, high on social, uh, uh, sorry, high on uh, financial security, okay, and you put them in an NGO kind of an environment? Yeah. That's a recipe for disaster. Right. Mm -hmm. Or Swap, swap the situation a bit. An uh, investor who is NGO oriented wants to wants to have the larger good in mind always brings on someone who is purely driven by the financial aspects as a founder. Or flip this picture either ways, and that's where most of the founder most of the cap, uh, investment stories are going awry. Just that there hasn't been enough research around it. But I have seen it in in my five years. This is where most of the flashpoints arise. A founder not knowing a co-founder well enough or a founder thinking that my classmate is going to be my best co-founder without knowing their own strengths and weaknesses, without knowing their strengths and weaknesses. Are your weaknesses going to get compounded when you start working together? Are your blind spots going to become massive blind spots when you start working together? Or are you consciously taking a call to make sure that you bring in a person whose blind spots differ from your blind spots, thereby improving the visibility of your idea? So. I think that's it's it's a very initial stage. Companies have not started talking about it, um, and there is that that uh, insecurity also. Yeah, uh, that is there. By the way, these are very powerful tools. As someone who has been using these tools inside out, I can tell you that these are very potentially very powerful, and if put in the right legal context, through 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 written understandings, non-disclosures. Okay, I think these tools can be used brilliantly, not just by the founders but also by the investors. I mean, I'm, I'm in a time which is recessionary, where new ideas and new fundings are hard to come by. 
why would you not look at one more data source that makes you make, make a brilliant decision? True. Mostly the answer is that people think that they are great enough. I mean, they, they want to be the, the Walmart guys and they, they want to be the Rupert Murdoch's of the world. Um, they will still be known by their successes, but the failures are going to pinch them a lot. Yeah, uh, I mean, one more point uh, in this particular thing, what you've discussed uh, is for an investor, <clears throat> you know, if he gives easy money, uh, he is definitely not giving the right example. Making the process right, that these are the prerequisites and, you know, this is what you need to go through, you know, not only makes it process driven, but end of the day, even the uh, startup, which is uh, the founder who is actually trying to get that fund from the investor or the venture capitalist, is also serious that ye log ye sabhi dekh rahe so the expectations are very clear as to whether I am mentally capable of, exactly. I have to deliver, I have to you know get this right whatever I promise, so they are definitely right. going to uh, test this and since they are testing it, I have to be careful about these observations, Absolutely. forget about the results, at least wo intention mentally he is prepared that mereko deliver karna hai yaar, you know they are pretty serious about all these things. I have to be ready and I have to deliver. Even I get the funds, this is one point they will observe me. Ye at least mentally uh, prepare ho ki Absolutely. these are the prerequisites. And this is very important. Hai. The hmm. moment they start looking that investors are looking at these factors, they'll understand that these factors have a role to play in the journey. True. That's where the appreciation, appreciation starts. So I think between the investors and the people who are seeking funds, it is the, the onus lies on the investors to bring in these best practices into the picture. Corporates are doing it left, right and center. Indian Army is doing it. Okay, uh, Indian Army does that. Uh, and, and you're doing that for a reason. True. These are shoulders on which the security of the entire nation is going to rest at some point. And they find these tools to be worthy right. in their selection process. What's stopping the investor from doing it? Yeah, and that's this- the call for action here. Yeah, <laughs> so th- this also, you know, uh, filters some of these startups which pop up because just because they like uh, they don't want to work under somebody. I mean, there are a lot of startups who just uh, start up with a new idea because they don't want to work under a boss. Right. They they quit quit the job and uh, just because they want to showcase that I have started something and uh, during this particular. So some of these things where things are not clear, they're not pretty serious about their brand or the startup. All these will like fizzle out uh, in this filtration process, but this, this is a nice test. Yeah. And, and by the way, you talked about wanting to be their own boss. Hmm. One of the career anchors is, all, is autonomy. Right. Right. If you're, if you're uh, disproportionately high on that part, you know that this investor is going to be a control freak. Okay. Or you know that the founder is going to be a hands off guy telling the investor to just go climb a tree if they're trying to direct where the funds should go or anything of that sort. So I think either ways, it's, I'm not saying that it's bad to be a control free kind of an investor. It's not, uh, each, each situation calls for its own approach, but you need to be mindful of it. That's the request that I'm making it's larger groups. And that actually is better for the entire ecosystem. The lesser relationships failing because of interpersonal issues. Okay. That failure is then a business case. It is not contaminated by the interpersonal equation and it can be picked up by the generations which come next and, and just focus on the focus on the credibility of the business model rather than thinking are a uh, founder and the investor did not go along well and that's why this okay let's shut this case then kind of a thing i think there is a lot of value that gets added to the entire ecosystem if we go that way yeah. one more person or you know the uh, stream or line of uh, employees who get benefited out of this are the uh, VC managers because a lot of us feel that it's the brand which is uh, you know investing us on uh, the startup directly but it's right. these managers fund managers who take the risk and then you know uh, they come into the conclusion and they, they decide that yes I should represent this file forward and right. they are the ones who are actually taking higher risk so if they have backed up with this data of you know they have also done the psychometric test of this particular founder or this particular team and they are okay and they are in green uh, yeah. and then they are putting forward will also save their jobs because they make few mistakes and you know they, they are messing up with their own career. Absolutely and again this is the blind spot created from the, the, the education system. Okay. 
content, uh, Ravi. Let's bring that also into the context for a moment. A finance guy is supposed to be good with numbers. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about perceptions, right? A finance guy is supposed to be great with numbers. People wise, yeah, it's okay if they don't make me well. They are they are anyway supposed to be geeks with these giant chashmas and all that stuff. So let them be. The question is, uh, a fund investor and the way the the investment manager has grown up the career ladder would be looking at funds, looking at the PE ratios, looking at revenues per employee, looking at EBIT, all those aspects. Where is the human nature? Where is the human mind True. that is getting active, applied? And that's where. The approach needs to be holistic. It would be unreasonable to expect a fund manager or to, 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 to expect an investment manager to be able to appreciate all these aspects. But it's always it's always within your reach to bring someone on board who has who appreciates that sense. And then you have two data, different data points. Company looks solid. There is a red flag on the psychometric piece which might not gel well. You are making an informed decision. Yeah, still I, decide on the failure of that investment, but you are making an infa- informed decision that sometime down the line this might be an issue. Issue, yeah. So those can be discussed out. I mean, those can be discussed out with the founder saying that this is where we found uh, you this thing, and you monitor that on a closer or you know frequent basis of the issue which got highlighted. Absolutely, absolutely. Good, good. So yeah, I mean, discussion. Theranos. I I encourage everyone to look at Theranos because it's like an onion. Okay. Layers after layers of subterfuge of the way these giants of the industry were taken for a ride. Okay, at all. I understand it's the worst case scenario. It's the worst case nightmare that is less likely to be true. It was a black swan event in that sense. But uh, all it takes is one black swan event to take care of castles. Right. How are you? How are you ensuring yourself about that? That's that's the question. That's the million dollar question, literally. Nice discussion. Any any questions from you, Prashant? Yes. Uh, finally, it means like uh, when our honourable Prime Minister has announced this Atm Nirbhar Bharat. So we have seen. Uh, means m- myself uh, sees it as an incubator professional. I have seen the startup perspective out of it. So how do you see in terms of HRM perspective towards this initiative, which would be actually people say and on a lot of forums we have said that China became Atm Nirbhar 20, 30 years back. Now right. it is becoming India wants to become. So, what's your HRM perspective towards uh, this whole initiative by our honourable Prime Minister? And sure. going local and vocal is one more uh, thing which has happened. So, how yeah. do you see in terms of HRM uh, this this all initiative? Sure. So, uh, this is my personal opinion that China and India are not apples to apples comparisons. The government ecosystems are very different. So the decision making mechanism is very different. You are talking about 20 different thoughts in a single room when you talk about India. You are talking about 20 people with the same thought in a room when you are talking about China. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Uh, but what you need to understand is, and I'm all for it, Atmanirbhar Bharat is a great concept. I think in the long term, both from geopolitical scenarios, both from and, and our own sustainability as uh, economy. Uh, depends heavily on that, as we have seen in the last few months. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are we going to do about it? Okay, uh, and that's where, if I were to say an oversimplified statement, make an over oversimplified statement. An arts person who is pursuing a bachelor in arts and plans to must pursue a master in arts after that should not be thinking about where their bread is going to come from just because they are not an engineer or a doctor in India. That's where this entire journey is going to start from. Okay, and the the education policy that has been brought in, I think it has that in eyesight. It's very clearly set on that version of talent. Okay, uh, I don't want to be judged as an individual by my capability on calculus. If I'm able to judge people better, you don't judge an elephant by the capability to climb a tree. Okay, that's a comparison of a monkey with an elephant. Okay, and then the you will have a very depressed elephant at the end of the day if that's what you keep judging that elephant by, right? So I think Atmanirbhar Bharat is a very great start. I think it's going to prompt people, uh, but it requires a similar ecosystem at the education level also. A person who does not feel good with math should not be castigated by saying that you're weak at math. 
they should be told that yeah listen it seems your teacher has done a crappy job of telling you what a mathematical equation should look like or how it works or the practical implementation of the quadratic equation that we all did in our 9th and 10th uh, uh, but that's not the student's fault right you have channeled your entire talent pool towards either being an engineer or being a, a, a doctor and everyone else is not worth it right you change that thought process it is going to stand you in good stead for any idea that you want to propose like atmanirbhar bharat self dependence uh, 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 being self sufficient in all these areas it is going to work brilliantly for you but you have to create that ecosystem right from the bottom it cannot be oh let's let's become atmanirbhar today it won't work like that even now we are going to struggle with that but i think the government's thought in bringing up the idea of atmanirbhar and bringing up the idea of the economic reforms uh, the educational reforms it is going to start playing a very important role 10 years down the line when we have our next next education policy groomed individuals hitting the market right so i think that one is important yeah beautifully answered that and we need to look from the bottom of the pyramid to hold the tip of the pyramid so i i believe that uh, most of the startups and uh, startups are now interdisciplinary and uh, there is no uh, i have seen startups from uh, arts background coming up with newer technologies and working out it, uh, for it and yeah. we believe that uh, this whole startup ecosystem will have a niche in this art nirbhar bharat uh, campaigning an education policy in the morning only we had some event where we were discussing and uh, some of the people from aict also discussed on the fact how this ed- educational policy and deep tech would go in lines and yeah. thank you for giving a hr perspective to it uh, i have no further questions over to you ravi hey thanks uh, manan uh, very nice discussion and why very nice example and this is the most left out topic you know though startups is all about people you know individuals who are like trying to do something great and but that individuality gauging their talent their strengths their weaknesses i think that is left out and you know you you nicely uh, put what are the areas described why this is important and you know why people should opt for it as an individual or as a brand before you know investing on uh, people because yeah we have people who are disturbed we have people who are like stressed out there are people who are motivated there are people who are doing this just for money there are uh, people who want to do this as passion so you have uh, the intention of people in, in a single classroom of you know 20 to 40 people differ each person wants to have a career because of for various reasons so, and I, i the same thing applies to the startup journey so thank you thank you for sharing the insights i'm sure i would definitely share this with a lot of my uh, you know friends who are into psychology and you know who talk about psycho psychometric tests because i'm sure they would have never i mean they were like limiting themselves only to like colleges and uh, you know students but this is the first time i'm hearing uh, that this approach should also be applied for startups for various reasons and you know definitely you know uh, more than the money you know uh, as everybody says you know there might be ups and downs you know we might win lose we might earn or the startup might fail but what's important the person loses the time of this you know 3 years or 5 years of tenure to succeed that is more valuable and which will not return back more than money the value of time is uh, important so thanks a lot for joining in and sharing all these insights I I personally learned a lot uh, from this particular discussion I'm sure a lot of audience here. yeah a lot of audience would also have uh, you know uh, you know learned from uh, this particular insight so friends do watch out do get connected uh, do uh, if you missed it uh, we have the recording uh, available on youtube so do watch out this particular series because this is meant for you this series we are building so that we can give you the proper education the insights the learnings where using which you can actually take it forward and thanks a lot prashant uh, sina who is from bits pilani who is heading the uh, bits pilani tbi so thanks for bits pilani and government of telangana and work tv for uh, you know enabling this uh, event so thank you guys have a great day thanks for joining